I just received my new EtherWave and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I love the design, it's responsive, it's stable, and there's a feature that I initially thought was just a design element and it's right here. This is a plastic insert and there may be, for some of you, something you'd like to try. And that has to do with what's underneath. Years ago, I decided to do something to my theremins that arguably ruined <laughs> the finish on them, but I needed access to the trim pots in that case. Sometimes it was because I wanted to make sure zero beat was set correctly, other times it was because zero beat disappeared. Either way, I needed access, and so I drilled three holes in each theremin. There's another one in each standard ether wave so I could have access to those trim pots and make adjustments within seconds instead of having to take the cover off and on and off and on and off and on and testing things. There is listed below there's a tutorial where I discuss drilling these types of holes for those of you who might have standard ether waves who want to be able to gain access to those trim pots and I've put that below as well. But for now let's look at the innovation finally that Moog came up with that will make it so that you never have to do this to your theremins. Removing that plastic insert gives you access to the trim pot for the volume oscillator, the fixed pitch oscillator, and the variable pitch oscillator. There are a number of things that you can do either in combination or individually with those trim pots. And we'll talk about that in a later tutorial, but for now Let's look at removing the plastic insert. Here we are. I have to tell you that initially I thought this must be a decorative strip or something when I first saw photographs. On getting it, I thought this was a metal strip. Then I realized it was plastic. And I thought, maybe, why would this be here? Maybe it's removable. Maybe there's a way to access the trim pots that I've been accessing for decades by drilling holes in my other theremins. And it turns out that that's correct. On page 27 of the user manual titled Calibration Points, it says to access the three top panel calibration points, remove the plastic insert by simply pulling it up from its edges. And that's where the problem began. I tried everything. I could barely get my fingernails underneath. I tried prying it up from one end, tried prying it up from another, tried everything I could, and I might get maybe a sixteenth of an inch of give or a tiny bit more in the middle but no matter what end I tried to get access to this thing was tight it was securely in place and quite honestly I felt that if I forced it I might break it it felt fragile particularly in the middle now if you look at it under light in certain conditions and you get a good angle on it, you'll see a slight indentation here and a slight indentation here, which is where whatever these pegs are that are holding it in actually are. So, afraid that I was going to break it, I contacted Moog and Adam responded. Adam sent me three photographs, the last of which was the most telling because he showed me the strip lifted up and I was able to see how it's inserted. And I realized that it was accessible but you'd have to be extremely extremely careful not to break it because this maybe it's not the case with yours but with mine this thing was not coming up so I was able to get a screwdriver with a very thin blade and to prevent myself from scraping or scratching anything that might be underneath I simply wrapped it in this little micro cloth just very very thin fabric and then I went to work I knew that there were pegs underneath, so I was able to slip the screwdriver underneath and start prying like this, and then shimmying the screwdriver, and eventually the first peg was exposed, and I was able to get it up, see? Then I went with it loose. I did the same thing on the other side. I was able now to get under the middle and ease the screwdriver over a little bit. Now it didn't come up that easily because I've made an alteration but it eventually did pry up. And I want to call your attention 
here to the standoffs. Take a look. It's these pegs that are inserted into these holes and the circumference of the pegs is a really, really tight fit in here. So I filed them down so that they could go in and out easily. I can press it in and without using the screwdriver, just gently take it back out again. Let's take a look at the standoffs. Once you've got the plastic insert removed, you can use either an emery board or I used a X-Acto blade to shave the little rises on the standoffs down a little bit. Each one has a little, I don't know if you can see this, but there are particles of the plastic coming off or you can just file it around the circumference. Go gradually and test periodically. You don't want the fit too loose. You want it to just fit nice and firmly so that you can push it in, it'll stay in, and also so that you can remove it. But once you have them filed down, give it a try and test it out. So now, with the circumference of these standoffs just slightly reduced, the insert fits back down easily and, more importantly, if you need to access things, comes up far more easily. However, if you want to gain access to these three trim pots and make some adjustments, Remember that you do so at your own risk. To quote the user manual directly, trim pots or variable inductors damaged by improper tuning are not covered by warranty. And it states very clearly in the user manual that you can render your theremin completely unplayable by messing around and getting it wrong. A tutorial that I did many years ago detailing how to drill the holes also showed about making some adjustments and we'll cover that at a later time so you can see what's possible by being able to access these trim pots and inductors. But that's for another tutorial. For now, I'm just going to play my instrument and enjoy it. And that's it. Now, anytime I want to, I can remove the plastic insert and make my adjustments. There's a link down below that will take you to a much earlier tutorial where I talk a little bit about some of the adjustments that can be made. Take a look at that and I'll be coming back with a tutorial on the adjustments specifically for this Etherwave in a little while. See you again soon.